This summer, I was invited by Fly Fishing International to one of the most remote places I've ever visited, to the far north of Canada, the Arctic. We were headed to the 74th parallel to fish for the unpressured Arctic char of the tundra. While this was planned as a fishing trip, it ended up being so much more. Well, it is currently July 23rd, 2021, and uh, starting to travel again. We're in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories. This is my first time up here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not getting a chance to explore the town, explore the area, because we are headed farther north, 1,500 kilometers farther north. This will be, without a doubt, the farthest north I've ever been. We're headed to the Arctic, to Arctic Watch Lodge. We've got a charter plane we're catching next. We've got a three hour flight to the middle of absolute nowhere. I can't wait, here we go. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your flight. Yellowknife was already the farthest north I'd ever been in Canada. It is wild to think that we were flying another 1,500 kilometers to the northern tip of Somerset Island. It didn't take long after watching the changing landscapes to realize we were in for a pretty special trip. Well, we are in the middle of nowhere. Time to introduce the crew. We got Gil, Gillian, hey. Gilly. We got his better half, Jen, better half. Jennifer, and the rest of the crew ditched us. It's probably about, what, four hour flight, three hour flight, three hour flight, and uh, there's no trees around. We're kind of, uh, kind of on the edge of the earth, feels like. I think there's our camp way out there on the horizon. Well, we took the raft across the river, which apparently isn't flowing too crazy right now. Apparently sometimes the current's just raging through there, but this is, uh, this is something else. Well, we've made it. I've been to some pretty cool places over the years. And uh, this, is, this is up there. This is the end of the world. Like, I, I am so excited. This trip came up super last minute, which seems to happen with a lot of big trips. I'm gonna tell you all about it, who we're fishing with, why I'm here, what we're filming. You can kind of guess what we're fishing for up here. But um, anyways, we're headed to our tents, our yurts, and uh, we'll give you guys a tour of this amazing place. Well, I'm in the Arctic Hair, see my room for the next week. This is sweet. That's a big bed. I was not expecting, uh, <laughs> was not expecting this. This is awesome. So cool. Got our own little bathroom, heater, somewhere to hang my clothing. There you have it. 
Gil, can you tell everyone why I'm on this trip? Jay is on this trip to, uh, to catch some big fish and to uh, film our exploits. Wait, tell me what, what's Fly Fishing International? Fly Fishing International is the best fly fishing travel booking agency on the planet. There you go. So, we have a mutual friend, Daniel Favato. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Dan Favato. Uh, Dan is a cameraman in the fishing world and, and the fishing cameraman world is small and Dan and, I, Dan and I have chatted over the years. But anyways, Dan does a lot of filming with Fly Fish International which does exotic trips all over the world, the most crazy places. Dan wasn't able to make this trip. Dan referred Gil to me and now I'm in the Arctic. So you're going to see a promo video for Fly Fish International. I'll link them below as well. You got you to check them out. They go everywhere, honestly. If you're looking to do something crazy, they... they they vetted the places, so you know you're getting an amazing destination. Like, look at this. This is just one of the options they have. So anyways, uh, tonight we're going to see some beluga whales. Um, this is more than just a fishing trip. There's obviously some incredible wildlife opportunities. So hopefully we get close to some beluga whales. I am incredibly excited. And uh, there will be some fishing this trip yet, but we're just bringing in the north. We're in the 74th parallel, which is pretty, pretty far up there. Anyways, we have insane weather and uh, like 24 hours of sunlight, so we're gonna get some good stuff on this trip. Well, we've almost made it to the coast and the blue they're so close. This is, this is wild. You can hear them calling, making noise. Wow. That's actually the reason that they built the camp where they did is because the proximity to the beluga whales. Oh man, I can't wait to show you guys this. Chris, why are there so many beluga whales here? Water's so warm. Is it the warm water? All the fish the round rocks to rub on your belly, mm. get rid of your old skin. <laughs> Whale spot. I was expecting to see whales on this trip, but nothing like this. Watching these belugas in the inlet was absolutely stunning. Before Arctic Watch Lodge was bought by the Weber family in 2000, this location operated strictly as a whale watching lodge, and I could see why. Cunningham Inlet is one of the largest whale nurseries on the planet, holding as many as 1,500 whales during peak periods. What a cool experience to start off the trip. Well guys, it is 11 o'clock at night. If you can believe it, it's, I think they said 23 or 24 hours of daylight here. Um, we're calling it a day. Welcome back to the Arctic. It is day two. I survived the no darkness sleep. It wasn't too bad, the beds are absolutely incredible. But uh, got up at seven, had some breakfast and now we're with the crew and we're going on an ATV tour to the Northwest Passage, to the icebergs, to the polar bears, to the ocean, the Arctic Ocean. The epic opening move here, if you guys are down for it, uh, it's a good, good date to get as far as we can get. People that you see out here on the way out. Um, It is tough to put into words how pretty this is. There's some whales right beside us. I, the whole drive along this coast, we're just seeing whales right by the edge. And uh, yeah, I've never done anything like this before. We were headed out to the point there where you can see the icebergs coming in, but I'm gonna get a couple whale shots here first.
The journey to Northwest Passage was nothing short of epic. We traversed between the steep hillside and ice-filled ocean to make it to Cape Marie, all the while keeping our eyes peeled as we drove looking for polar bears and seals out on the ice. We are way out here now. We stopped for a picnic lunch. The Northwest Passage. Cape Marie. Really? And what's for lunch today? Tomato soup. Cheese and bread. Amazing. Sorry? And tomato soup that you're holding for me. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we had an amazing lunch with that backdrop. Now we're headed back to the lodge, taking a shortcut out here, which may involve a swamp and uh, might get messy. On the way back from the Northwest Passage, we were asked by our guides if we wanted to take the same way back or a shorter, more scenic route through the Red Valley. They warned us there was a chance of getting stuck, but we went ahead with it anyways. Well, we got stuck. We got really stuck. The tundra has something called permafrost, and essentially the ground a few feet down stays frozen year round. This causes water to never actually seep back down and creating some of the worst muck I'd ever seen. First we got the side-by-side -side stuck, and then we got the ATV stuck, and then we repeated this cycle probably three more times. Eventually, we got all vehicles back and made it back to camp. Memories were made. All right guys, we're back from an epic, epic day out on the tundra. Um, I'm gonna give you a little photo tip today, a little gear tip. It's called UV filters. UV filters go in front of your lens and it's just a little clear filter you screw on. I'll show you, try to unscrew this one right here. So the UV filters, more than anything, the reason I put them on all my lenses is because they're protecting it. You know, you can get one for, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever, and it protects your lens. Today, my backpack got tossed around in the back of the side-by-side, -side, and look at that. Luckily, the UV filter was on, whatever, $90 UV filter broke, otherwise, it would have been like a $1,500 lens that got crushed. So, little investment, I put them on all my lenses, UV filter, just a clear piece of glass, and it keeps your gear. But anyways, um, amazing day. Um, sightseeing, having lunch on the shore and just, yeah, crazy train and we got stuck. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow is the day we fish. Um, now we're headed to the dining room for another incredible meal. We're getting spoiled here, but um, yeah, I mean, for the first day and a half, it's amazing what we've all seen and done and we've got another week of it. Well, before we head on our flight for our first day of fishing, uh, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the main lodge because it's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Hey. Yeah. Here's the crew. I was expecting to be roughing it up here, and that was not the case. We were getting spoiled. A beautiful main lodge and five-star meals every night. These guys had it figured out. One of those, that's what we want. So we are on Somerset Island. Cunningham Inlet is where we're at, and we are flying today down here. This is called Cresswell. Cresswell Bay. Should be some char in there. I'm not sure exactly where we're fishing, but apparently this area is also one of the best places to see a narwhal. What's a narwhal, you might ask? It's like a mystical creature. It's like the unicorn of the ocean, and this is actually a narwhal tusk. Honestly, a unicorn whale, and uh, 
that's I mean I don't think they'll let me bring it home but I would love to come home with a with a tusk but anyways we're off for our first day fishing at Arctic Watch Caswell Bay. I apologize for the wind noise. Windy with a chance of char. Well, we we're hiding out of the wind. Kill's getting rigged up. The rest of the crew's getting rigged up. This audio is probably trash, but uh, I'm gonna get the long lens on and hopefully film Gil catching the first char of the trip. This is what we came for, fly fishing for Arctic char. The stories of Cresswell Bay got us excited and it was time to try our hand at these sea run beauties. The wind was like nothing we had ever fished in before, but we kept casting through it anyways. It took us a bit to get things dialed in and as the tide switched, the char started to eat. We got Justin whipping up some <laughs> Arctic char sashimi. Mm. My man Justin. Nothing like a sashimi in 75 kilometer wind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's the magic. There's the, uh, the special ingredient. Secret ingredient. There you go, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's coming right up. Hopefully I can do this without dropping it in the gravel, but this is Arctic char sashimi. This char is about an hour old. That's unreal. I've I've never had freshwater sashimi before. I guess this is kind of salt water. Wow, that's some good kick. That was really good. Yeah. Must be that catch and cook smoked salt. All right, guys, it's time to do a little fishing on my own. And uh, it's, it's still a hurricane. I'm trying my best. I got my mics tucked inside of my sweater so it doesn't sound like a, well, like the hurricane it is. But anyways, the crew's been catching a lot of char and getting some cool shots. But it's time to catch my first Arctic char. All right, here we go. Time for the cameraman to fish a little bit. Use a little pink and white clouser. And it's windy. Nice deep pool here at the bottom of the riffle. Come on, baby. Lots of fish, we're hooked up. We're hooked up. Arctic char, baby. Oh, ho, ho. this is like 80 kilometer winds. Come on, it's gonna be interesting to land by myself. <laughs> This is why we came to the northern extremities of Canada. Come on.
Yes! We did it! We came to the Arctic and we caught an Arctic char on the fly rod. I'm gonna pop that fly out, give her a quick dunk. Arctic char, baby, right there. This fish is a cromer coming straight from the ocean and she's going back. We did it, we battled the massive winds. I really haven't done too much fishing today, but that was it. Wow, there's one right by my nose. Come on, that is insane. Oh, I saw a big one by my feet. Oh, he's, oh, he's on it, he's on it, he's on it, come on. Oh my goodness, I can see him. I can see him, that's a big one. Oh, it's gonna cross right in front of him. Come on, come on. Oh, I can see him. Oh, he's chasing. Oh, he's chasing. Oh, he's right there. Come on. Oh, oh, that was insane. Wow. I'm good. That was crazy. That was absolutely crazy. That was, wow, just wow. I just saw those big lips open up. Oh, baby, unreal. We're doing eight weights with floating line. He's using a beadhead clouser, which just give me a little bit of depth. He chased it right to my feet and ate it. It's pretty cool. Try to back up. Nice. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you, sir. Wow. Unbelievable. Arctic char will never get old. Look at this fish. So cool. All right, we're getting it back. <laughs> I am absolutely speechless. This is only our first day of fishing and the trip has been made. These, these conditions are not ideal, not ideal for filming or for fishing or for just being outside, but we're making the most of it. And this is just stunning. We got the 20 minute warning. I'm gonna try to cast a little further upstream here for the last couple minutes. All right, we're back at the lucky pool. Still windy, in case you're wondering. What, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, ho, 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 that's a big one. Double it up. Oh, we got in the fast current. Oh man, I saw him eat right by the edge. So cool. It's going right into the fast stuff. So good. Need her to beat herself. <laughs> sure. 
I can't believe I didn't break my rod there. Nice grab. Hero grab. <laughs> if you guys want a trip of a lifetime, give Gil a call, Fly Fishing International. It's normally not this windy. <laughs> so good, what a day. Are you okay? What a cool fish. Are you okay? You good? Oh, what is the blooper reel? Oh man. Mission complete. We'd got our first Arctic char on the fly. We battled through the winds and the waves, but it paid off. The trip had been made, but in the back of my mind, I was still hoping for a big orange char. back to another day in the Arctic. This is more the weather I expected when I came up here. Like windy, dreary, rainy. This is a, this is a weather day. We are gonna be staying close to camp, I think. Not fishing today. I'm, I'm told we're going for a hike to a waterfall and uh, the camping gear might stay in my backpack. I might be able to pull it out a little bit, but yeah, it's probably like four degrees, five degrees and, uh, and misting, which is not ideal camera conditions but that's okay we're gonna have a great day regardless because we're in a pretty amazing place and I may never get up here again so we're gonna make the most of it we made it look at this view unbelievable this is just hiding behind the lodge. I think they saved it specifically for a rainy, bad weather day like this, but yeah, this is wild. You wouldn't expect this. I've been very fortunate to travel to some incredible places around the world, but when asked, where is the most untouched and remote place you've ever been to, without a doubt, it is Canada's north. The sheer vastness and beauty remains untouched. Welcome back to another day in the north. Today, we were fishing. The weather is getting a little bit better yesterday. We did some e-biking, did some waterfall chasing, but we're on the hunt or some Arctic char. We're headed to an inland lake, which is a little bit different. It's called the Nookshook Lake. Apparently, I, th I think this is it. It's gonna be a little more of an adventure, two to three hour ATV ride, they're saying. And uh, we are right there. And we are headed along that ridge to right there. So apparently these char go up the river and actually get stuck in the lake. And those are the fish we're fishing for today. And, and probably the chance of more colored up char. And I know some people are all about the perfect silver sea run char, but I would love to see an orange pumpkin, like just bright orange. That's, that's like what I have in my mind when I think of Arctic char. So that's the plan for today. It's gonna be quite the adventure. We have a chance to see muskox on the ride out, uh, maybe wolves, who knows. But uh, I think getting there is gonna be like half the adventure and um, it's gonna be a lot of riding, but I'm pumped. Day two of fishing, here we go. Welcome to a Nookshook Lake, we made it. How long did that take? Three hours. Three hours probably. We got stuck a couple times, we got freed. But this is some turquoise blue water here. That was like the longest ATV ride I've ever been on. Sorry about the wind noise. The Arctic is a windy place. 
But look at this water. Might be tough to see from here, but like two thirds of the lake is still covered by ice. There's an inflow here, or it's an outflow. I'm not, I haven't even looked at it. Yeah, it's an inflow. And apparently it's one of the best spots in the lake. So they tell us that the char are pretty spooky here compared to on the river. So uh, we're probably gonna put the drone up and try to get a pretty sweet eat because whenever you get to a spot, typically like your first couple casts are key. The fish aren't spooky, or they might be spooky, but they haven't been caught yet. So I think Gil's gonna get geared up and I might put the drone up and try to get that magic shot. But look what they're making over here. Look at this windbreak. That's beautiful. Look at this lunch in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful. Well, Mr. Weber. All right, let's see. What, uh, tell us a little bit about a Nookshook Lake. Uh, Nookshook Lake is a 10 kilometer long uh, lake with uh, landlocked char. So the land is rebounding after the ice age and the fish that are in the lake are no longer able to go to the sea and back in. There's cool. a waterfall. Yeah. And so they, they live in the lake, so there's not a lot of nutrients and they're uh, quite old. They're the average age is 15 to 30 years old. Wow. And they're sort of two to six pounds. Very and, cool. Uh, the best place to fish is at the end of the... <laughs> right uh, there. Right there. Perfect. Very cool. So this ice will stay on the rest of the season? It, it will uh, never... Yeah, pretty much, you know, maybe by the end of August it'll be gone. Yeah. But I've been here in, in the middle of August and there's still some wow. ice. Wow. That's wild. So it, yeah. There are definitely seasons when it probably never gets totally yeah. ice free. So these these fish color up a little more than the other ones? Or um, there's a chance maybe? Some of them are, yes. Yeah. Some of them do. Years, <laughs> the food's good? I'm, I'm not even fishing. I drove three <laughs> hours for that mushroom <laughs> delicious soup. What do you think, Gil? Oh. Clouds or fly? Yeah, we'll go clouders, maybe small nymphs and woolly buggers. Mm. Love me a woolly bugger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of chilly. All right, Gil just caught a beautiful colored up char, yellow, not orange, but the most color we've seen. Got some cool drone strikes, but now I'm giving it a shot. Come on, baby. Casting that clouds there. You can see there's a little stream that comes in right here. And on the drone, I saw him sitting right on the edge of that break. Oh, that was a fish. That was a fish. Come on, one fish. One colored up char that will never ask for anything again. Yes, hooked up. 
She's little. She's a char. First Anook Shook char. Getting tangled all up in my line. <laughs> we did it. Look at that cute little guy. Goodbye. Oh, you went the wrong way. <laughs> that fish went back up the creek and then down. Well, we came, we conquered Anookshook Lake. I got a fish for like 15 minutes. That's all right. We got the prettiest char of the trip so far. It's time for the journey back to the lodge. Pretty cool spot I could spend days out here, I'm sure. There's a lot of water to explore, but they were definitely stacked right at that, uh, right at the inflow, but uh, super cool spot. And uh, I mean, that fish that Gil caught was all worth it, but we got an adventure back to the lodge and uh, who knows what's next. All right, we're back at Anookshook Lake and uh, we're looking for an orange one, a big orange one, yellow one, red one, a colorful one. We got the crew hiding behind the camera here. I'm excited, these are the best fishing conditions we've had yet. Wind isn't screaming in our face. Looking for a big orange one. A pumpkin. I'll go take a look at the other creek and see what's living. We're walking, we're looking. We're in the Arctic. This is this is pretty, pretty special place. And we saw a couple colored up ones when we got out here. They kind of get spooked, so. We'll see what we can do. I'll see if I can stay a little further back here and cast into this current. If, if I caught an orange one, I would not cry, but it might be a little emotional. All right, here, guy. Here we go, guys. Boom. Right in the middle of the current where they live. Oh my goodness, that was a big one. Wow. Big one just surfaced right in my casting lane. That is the dream. Come on. I need that fish. Ooh, that was close. I see a couple. I see a couple. Oh, oh no. Just caught my camera. Everything's okay. I'm a trained professional. I think there's a fish behind me. Yeah. Yes. We are hooked up. Oh, it's an orange one. Come on, baby. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, yes. Guys, wait till you see this one. Oh, I'm so happy. Still need to get it in. Man, is this fish fighting. Don't have a net, so I'm just gonna pretty much beach it and try to get a tail on it. Oh, look at this fish! Yes! Oh my goodness! My trip is made. Guys, I can't express how beautiful this fish is. Like, just just look at that, and they get oranger, that's the crazy part. Anyways, we're gonna get this fly out, and uh, maybe we'll catch another. Nice. Thank you guys so much. Dude, right on. <laughs> thank you, oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, now you guys catch one, that's all I needed. That's all I needed, honestly. I have the opportunity to fish in some pretty cool locations, to fish for a lot of cool fish, but like, 
That fish made me emotional. Like, uh, for a fisherman, for a hardcore angler, Arctic char in the Arctic, I, I feel like is top of the bucket list for so many people. And for me, I'd caught char, but never, never a wild char like this with the colors and just this landscape I'm fishing against a sheet of ice. There's no one for, <laughs> for very long ways. But yeah, it just got me emotional. I'm very, uh, very blessed to be able to do what I do and who knows if I'll be able to come back here, but I'm very thankful I at least got to visit it once. And uh, I mean, I don't want to get greedy, but let's catch another one. Finally, the conditions were in our favor. The water was clear and the char were hungry. With eight weight rods, floating line, 12 pound tapered leaders and streamer style flies, we were getting it done. This is what we came for. He's on. That looks like a decent fish. You got a good one? Show me this beautiful, beautiful fish. Amazing, biggest one from the lake today. Gilly's the man. My man! Shout out to Donnie and Nansen, making it happen. Guys, I've been having the trip of a lifetime at Arctic Watch Lodge. Huge shout out to Gil and Fly Fishing International for bringing me out. Um, we captured some cool stuff today. Like the, the fishing was phenomenal. I'm so glad we got to get back to the lake a second time. Tomorrow morning is our last day here. We're flying back to Cresswell to the south end of the island, south side, south side of Somerset Island, which is, I mean, the fishing was great last time and I think it's only gonna be better with some better weather. But tonight, like I've done a, a polar bear plunge before, but this is like a true polar bear plunge because I mean, there's polar bears around here. We're gonna go jump in the ocean, the Arctic Ocean. I'm gonna go throw some trunks on and uh, we gotta do it just to, just to say we did, so. We're going swimming. Are we That's going good. swimming? No, yeah, we're just gonna, we're going for a little bit of a polar dip, you know. Uh, it's gonna be nice and warm. It's the last night. Yeah. It is our last night yeah, at Arctic oh. Watch Lodge. Gilly and me and Jen, his better half, behind us there. We're going for a polar polar bear plunge, and apparently the water's actually colder than like even ice diving in fresh water because there's a salt content. So it actually takes a colder temperature for it to freeze. I forget what it was. I think it's minus two or something. It takes the water to freeze here. Um, we are at the river, but uh, it's, it's probably the coldest open water I've ever dove in. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's like something you just, you gotta do. When am I gonna be here again, right? So there it is. It looks cold. I'm gonna run back to the shower afterwards. They got warm showers here, and uh, then I can say I swam in the Arctic Ocean. Maybe catch a char with my teeth. There's some good current. That might float away. When I come up. Is this filming? It's filming, it's rolling. All right, here we go. Are we jumping at the same time? I don't know, Jay. It kind of looks like you're going solo. Watch out, there's, uh, there's screws on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, watch out. Jay, 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 be careful. There's screws that stick out of there. I cut my foot. Can earlier. I jump? Yeah, I'm Is filming. Are you joining me? Oh, to your first. Is it just me? To your left. To your left. There's rocks to jump off. I'm just, I'm going right here. There's current. There's, there's current. current, Jay. Jump to the left. Don't be dumb. To the Arctic! Oh! Oh! You alright? Oh my goodness! I can't! You're almost there! Oh my goodness! Let's do it, Joe! Come on! Oh, let's go! No. <laughs> he is in there waiting for you! <laughs> let's go! Gilly, jump to the left though, seriously. Oh my goodness! Let's go! Wow, Gilly Jen beat you in. 
<laughs> well done, you trio. You are you are not human. You, is there something wrong with you? You're a freaking polar animal. I'm, I'm one with the charm. One with the charm. Gil. Yeah. What day is it? It is the last day of the trip. I believe this is the eight of our adventure, something like that. Nice. And uh, we're going back to Cresswell. Cresswell, Nansen, what's Cresswell? Cresswell is the holy grail of Arctic char fishing. <laughs> nice. It's the promised land. <laughs> what makes it so good? The abundance of large fish. <laughs> schools of fish around you, schools of fish between you, and uh, yeah, it's just such a magical place, the landscape, the wildlife that you encounter, polar bears, narwhal, yeah, there's even walrus, and uh, yeah, muskox grazing, and uh, Amazing. Yeah. That sounds good. Well, last time, that was our, our first fishing day was at Cresswell, and uh, we caught some fantastic fish. It took a little bit for us to dial them in, uh, but it was like hurricane winds, like 70 kilometer winds which was horrendous to, to film in, to fish in, but I mean, we made the most of it. We caught some great fish. We're headed back with Nance, and Nance's family actually runs this place, Arctic Watch, and uh, so he's he's probably caught more charp here than anyone, so we're excited to have him along guiding us. And uh, yeah, this is it. We got a couple hours to fish. It won't be a long day by any means, but uh, hoping for some char sashimi and uh, a couple more big chrome sea run Arctic char. The pilots warned us before takeoff, the fog may not allow us to land at Cresswell, but we decided to roll the dice one last time anyways. As we flew over the changing landscapes, I was once again reminded how incredible Canada's north is. As we started our descent towards the landing strip, the fog became thicker and thicker, and we had to turn around. While we all would have loved a storybook ending to the trip with one last incredible fishing session, we'd already completed our goals we came to achieve in the north. The memory of that orange char will stay with me for the rest of my life, and I'm forever thankful to God for opportunities like this.